the most optimistic uh, fairy tale numbers I've ever seen in my life in this this I just don't understand come on we are not growing at 2.8 percent annualized that's not happening and and this is going to be revised downward I, I, I mean especially what is bringing it up so much, Cheryl? Why is it 2.8? What is bringing this number so high? A Fox Business host is melting down over positive economic news. Now, uh, data released on Wednesday showed that the American economy actually grew at a strong 2.8% in the last quarter. Whoa! Look at that. That's stronger what, than what many economists had actually expected. They expected it to be somewhere around like 1.9. But 2.8, that's pretty good. Uh, but apparently, this lady uh, on Fox Business, she's like, bullshit. Bullshit. No, oh, really? Okay, well, now Thursday's report from the Commerce Department backs up this report uh, and said gross domestic product, uh, which GDP, the economy's total outputs of goods and services, picked up the April-June quarter after growing at a 1.4% pace in the January-March period. Again, going to from 1.4 to 2.8, so it's pretty much double. And that is despite, uh, in, despite inflation. So now, before I get into the details about why that is uh, and what actually happened, I just want to mention how funny it is when there happens to be some positive economic news, the right doesn't believe it. <laughs> they're, they're not buying it. They, they can't grasp it. Does not compute. They're all over here like, really? Oh, are you sure? Are you sure? Oh, it's going to be revised down. It's going to be revised down. Yeah, that's what they say about any time that there's positive economic news. But if this were happening under a Republican, under, under Donald Trump, they would buy it without a question. Without question. <laughs> so, but there's a reason for that. First, let me get into the details of what happened. So, now, it turns out that a lot of this had to do with some pretty strong consumer demand. Stuff, uh, spending on stuff like cars, appliances, things like that. You also had business investment that drove a lot of this. Uh, and, you know, th this is uh, businesses that are replacing a lot of their equipment. And they're also bulking up their inventories, right? So, yeah, that's going to have a lot of, uh, that's going to have a big effect on buying things because <laughs> they're buying a lot of things. Then, of course, you have the good jobs numbers. You've got low unemployment. So, in the macro economy, it looks like things are starting to get better. All right. Uh, now, as a result of that, the Federal Reserve is looking to start cutting interest rates in the next couple of months by about September ish, they're saying. And of course, look, the high interest rates are obviously a strain on the economy as well because it makes it more expensive to borrow for things like buying new cars, et cetera, buying new houses. Uh, and so once that eases, well, I mean, that's going to make the economy better. All right. Uh, now, the thing is, Republicans don't want that. <laughs> That's the last thing Republicans want is an economic boom right before the election. <laughs> and so now here's the thing. For some reason, Republicans are considered to be better on the economy. I don't know why. I can't I, I just I can't understand that. Because when you look at the data, Republicans are actually pretty good at inheriting good economies and then wrecking them. Now look at George W. Bush, right? Look at Donald Trump. They're better at wrecking it in the long term. How? How do they do that? By giving rich people more money. That's the entire purpose of the Republican Party, you remember, is to funnel money and send it to their donors, send it to the wealthy. In fact, according to an Oxfam analysis released on Thursday, they've done a really good job of it. Uh, and it's not just in the United States, but also across the world. Over the past 10 years, the global 1%, this is the elite of the elites, right, accumulated $42 trillion in new wealth. Nearly 34 times than the entire bottom 50% of the world's population. So, so if you've got a problem with the global elite, good, I do too. <laughs> and, and that's why. They're taking all the money. They're taking all the resources. Uh, and how do they do that? By doing tax cuts for the rich. In fact, a separate Oxfam analysis released earlier this year found that the economic and political elite's global war on fair taxation has actually slashed taxes for the rich by 32% since 1980. The result, Oxfam said on Thursday, uh, is that global billionaires have been paying a tax rate equivalent to less than 0.5% of their wealth.
In a statement, Max Lawson, Oxfam's head of inequality policy, said, Inequality has reached obscene levels, and until now, governments have failed to protect people and the planet from its catastrophic effects. The richest 1% of humanity continues to fill their pockets, while the rest of us are left to scrap for crumbs. Now, uh, getting back to Fox News, this is who they work for. They work for the global elite who are pushing for tax cuts and deregulation. In fact, Donald Trump is part of that elite. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, so it's talking about global elite, right? By the way, it, it's not like they're all just getting together to do this. No, you have Trump, who is a member of the elite, who is doing this. And you've got other politicians in other countries who are doing the same thing, that are pushing for austerity measures for everyone else while pushing for lower taxes on themselves. It's not some weird global conspiracy, right? It's just that people in power in a lot of places, they're like, I don't know, I just want to cut taxes for myself so that I can get richer. Not, not a conspiracy. It's just what they do. Now, of course, there is uh, the way that they do that is a conspiracy. Um, but it's I think it's the um, most well-known and easiest to figure out conspiracy uh, because what they do is just they lie to get into power and then they pass tax cuts and deregulation for themselves and their donors uh, and then they tell you to blame immigrants for it or blame gay people or blame trans people or look over there to squirrel uh, blame, blame socialism <laughs> for the things that they're doing and so again easiest conspiracy to figure out right now trump again fox news works for people like trump okay uh when donald trump was president fox news was state media right and so yes you have fox news that works for the elites uh that work for the billionaires the wealthy that are trying to push for more tax cuts and deregulation and they know trump would do it trump's plan is to bring the corporate tax rate down to 15 percent Fox News uh, and their paymasters are are just salivating over this. Like, oh, yes. Yo, lower my corporate taxes more. Mm, yummy, my tummy. Um, now, you might be wondering then, okay, well, that's Trump's plan. What about Kamala Harris? Well, she doesn't have a tax plan yet. She hasn't come out with it. She just started her campaign. <laughs> okay. That said, we do have an indication of the direction that she might go based on some of her past statements and past policy positions. For example, when she was running in 2020, some of her ideas included imposing a financial transaction tax on Wall Street, using that to pay for healthcare. Uh, there's also a pharmaceutical excess profits levy and a bank tax. She also wanted to put the corporate tax rate back up to 35%, which is actually higher than what President Biden wanted to do. He wanted to put it up to 28%. So, but that said, that was during her primary campaign back in 2020 when she wanted to sound more progressive. Um, but what did she do as a senator? That's the main question, right? Um, because what she did as a senator will kind of inform you what kind of politician that she will be if she's president. Uh, well, during that time, Harris sponsored 19 tax bills and co-sponsored 143. Now, who did she co-sponsor the most with? That turns out she most frequently joined as a sponsor with Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Warren on tax issues. Elizabeth Warren, fairly progressive on tax issues. Definitely wanting to go after the rich. Uh, definitely wanting things like a wealth tax. So that's encouraging. Uh, now, there was another bill that uh, Harris had sponsored, and it was a tax credit geared at low- and middle-income families with or without children. It's called the Lift the Middle Class Act. Under that 2018 proposal... Income eligible single filers under the income caps would receive up to $3,000 and married couples up to $6,000. Though there were phase outs that would be varied, $100,000 was the final cutoff for any tax credits, which would have been collected as monthly payments. So, yeah, that, that's a lot like um, the child tax credit that, again, was quite popular. The proposal would have actually also been on top of the child tax credit as well as the earned income tax credit. And so, not too bad. Look, it's, yes, it's pretty standard Democrat, we're gonna do means-tested tax credits, but the change is 
giving it to you monthly instead of at the end of the year, which I think would help a lot of people. Now, we're going to see if she brings that policy back now that she's running for president uh, in, 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 in the general election. So she's not trying to get through a primary. Uh, now, according to Market Watch, though, had, uh, Harris and Biden have a lot in common when it comes to tax policy. So what that means is that she'll likely want to tax incomes over $400,000 a year and not raise taxes on anybody making less. So $400,000 will likely be the cutoff. Um, that said, the direction that she goes in tax policy would generally mean, uh, or I should say generally depend on who Harris would put in as Treasury Secretary, okay? And so that ultimately will show you, you know, what she plans on doing. And so if you have like a Jamie Dimon, we're screwed, right? But if you put in somebody that is actually progressive uh, as Treasury Secretary, then we're talking, then we're talking, then you know we're gonna see some progressive tax measures taking on corporate power, taking on the rich. Right now, we just don't know. That said, the right wing is hyperventilating because there might be a chance uh, that there's a possibility that they may, their donors may have to pay just a little bit more in taxes, their fair share. And so now they're trying to claim that any economic news that is good must be fake. It must be manufactured and that everything is horrible and terrible uh, and we need to vote for Trump in order to get him in office so that we can save the American economy. <laughs> Look, maybe it will be revised later on. I don't know. Or yeah, it may be that there is a bit of, uh, now that there's a bit of hopium in the air, that things not only are starting to get better, but will continue to get better under Democrats. That will help Harris's re-election chances uh, and maybe even uh, a chance to get us to taxing the rich fairly, like we should have been the whole time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shutting down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.